After 84 years of preparation, Nancy Drew, Midnight in Salem, was released to widespread success. At least that's what I would say if we were in a normal universe. Unfortunately, we live in Bizarro World, where 45% of people have negative opinions about this game. That is just plain ridiculous. Clearly, this is the best game in the Nancy Drew series. Possibly the best video game ever. Yeah, the Mario games are okay, but can he make Johnny Cakes? No! No, he cannot! So, what makes Midnight in Salem utterly fantastic? Let's start with the opening scene, which takes place in Austria. Because nothing says Nancy Drew in Salem like an Austrian prologue. I always thought Austria and Salem, Massachusetts were basically interchangeable settings. Nancy's here to find a book written by Judge Sewell. She goes into a dark, empty room and talks to Dr. Hurst through a door. I am so glad for this scene, because I love to stand in dark rooms and talk with somebody who's on the other side of a door. This is my most favorite hobby. I do it all the time. It's way, way better than Nancy Drew, Legend of the Crystal Skull. Oh, that lame game tries to have a dark room in the opening, but utterly fails, because you can actually see some things in the room, including the character that Nancy's talking to. What moron made that decision? We don't want to see actual characters in these games. We want closed doors. Nancy talks for a few minutes about the book that players will never get a chance to read, and I know it's still the start of the game, but I am really sad the conversation takes a pause so Nancy can open a window. That completely takes me out of the moment. I hate it. I wish there could have been five more minutes of talking in the dark instead of interrupting the conversation with a difficult puzzle. And make no mistake, this is definitely a difficult puzzle. You have to click on the window to open it. Can you believe that? Ugh. I have to believe this puzzle is why 45% of people don't like the game. I remember when I first played this game, I was screaming, literally screaming at how hard this puzzle is. All I wanted to do was have conversations in the dark, and the game had to ruin that with the puzzle from hell. Luckily. After a few minutes of crying, I was able to continue with the game. I moved my mouse over the window, and I... I'm sorry, it's really painful for me to relive this moment. I clicked my mouse button, and the window opened, finally bringing an end to this terrible puzzle. Not only is opening the window a terrible puzzle, but it lets light into the room. What?! How can I have conversations in the dark if the room is light? Still, I love seeing the room because it's mostly empty. It's got stray papers you can't read and some furniture covered with sheets. Perfect! Nobody wants a room that's filled with items or puzzles. I want a room with nothing important inside. In fact, I would prefer it if they got rid of that furniture and just had bare floors and walls everywhere. That's so much better, and such an obvious idea, I can't believe they didn't think of it. You're supposed to solve the puzzle of finding the book, but I never do that. I go right back to Dr. Hurst, so I can keep talking to her through the door. It's so wonderful they can resume their conversation about the book that they don't read. More complex and nuanced parts of the mystery like this greatly benefit from longer conversations. As a contrast, take the first conversation with Deirdre Shannon. Deirdre Shannon, of course, is a fan favorite character. She dated Sonny June in The Shattered Medallion, and was Dave Gregory's steady back home in Secret of Shadow Ranch. I was very upset that Deirdre's first phone call is less than a minute long. LESS THAN A MINUTE! That's not enough time for players to fully enjoy a conversation and understand what's happening. I hate it when the game rushes through important plot points like this. 
it's not the sort of thing that needs to be explained once or twice. It should be explained four times. How else will players understand we're talking to Deirdre? Fortunately, it's just a preview of good things to come, because Deirdre calls back later to invite Nancy to Salem. This is followed by a glorious 10-minute segment of Nancy talking to Deirdre in the car. Isn't it wonderful? My only complaint is that I wish it was longer. There's a noticeable drop in quality when we stop talking about Tegan and May in order to meet them. No, no, I want to talk about them, not talk to them. The worst part is that there isn't enough recap here. I want to talk to Deirdre for 10 minutes, then recap the conversation we just had, then pre-cap the upcoming conversation we're going to have with Tegan, recap who Tegan is, then talk to Tegan, reminding her of what we said earlier, recap the conversation at the end, then recap the conversation with Deirdre, because obviously we need her take on the entire conversation, and then restart the entire process when May shows up. Okay? Look, I'm not trying to complain here. After all, the point of this video is to show why Midnight in Salem is such a fantastic game. And really, who doesn't love starting an adventure game with an hour of conversation? No one! I'm just saying, it could have been two hours of conversation. I feel cheated that the Hardy Boys, Jason and Lauren, don't show up until the second day of the game. Think of all the potential conversations we missed as a result of that. Part of me also weeps for the lost nine hours of conversations with Nancy's boyfriend Ned about different types of trees. That would have been so beautiful. But that's okay, because guess what? In our first conversation with Judge Danforth, he is standing on the other side of a door. Yes! We talked to someone who's standing on the other side of a door for a second time! And you can have multiple conversations with him through a door! It's so beautiful! That was the moment I knew this game would win Game of the Year! The game rides this conversation high with the other characters. I love how Alicia stands behind the desk, Tegan stands behind a desk, Olivia stands behind a desk, and Lauren stands behind a counter, which looks like a desk if you squint. There are some critics who say the characters look like they were made in The Sims in 2005. That's not true. They were clearly made in 2006. The important thing is not what the characters look like, it is how much the characters talk. This is why, on all three days of the game, the major puzzle is talk to all the characters. The game developers really nailed this aspect of the game. It is not repetitive at all. I do not want to look for clues or explore. I don't want to interrogate suspects. I just want to talk endlessly. That's what this game gives me. I want six hours of talking attached to my half hour of gameplay. I know, that's a little too much gameplay, but if you know what you're doing, you can cut it down to 20 minutes easily. That said, I loved the wavelength puzzle in the graveyard. I normally hate puzzles, but that wavelength puzzle is so wonderful, I am now a convert. I just love fiddling with knobs that don't work while the sound effects scream at me. <laughs> Hearing that noise for 10 minutes straight, it just brings a tear to my eye. That puzzle is truly a chef's kiss. I could go on and on about how much I love Midnight in Salem, but I have a busy day ahead of me. I'm planning to double blindfold myself, then look for a lost marble inside an empty room. So have a great April Fool's Day, and I will see you all later. I give Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem a 9.996 out of 10. While it is the best game I've ever played, it does need a few more conversations to truly make it a masterpiece. I'm thinking Nancy and Sweater Guy could talk about poetry. Hopefully, we will get a remastered version that corrects this hideous error.